Ralph Abraham uh, talks about fractals and chaos, and I want to show you this, this uh, little excerpt, so it's not me just saying it. It's an excerpt out of this article on the mathematics of human life. Mathematical studies of fractals, this is geometry I'll talk about, reveal that the repetitive branching within branching structure of a fractal represents the best way to get the most surface area within a three-dimensional space. So if I wanted to take a membrane, which is a two-dimensional surface area, and put it into a three-dimensional space, what geometry would I use? Fractal geometry. What's well, fractals? Well, they're beautiful equations. And uh, 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 Dr. Kaku yesterday in physics uh, talked about what? He said that when we really understand how life works, the equation is going to be a little tiny, short, simple equation. Well, guess what? The fractal geometry is the simplest mathematic equation. All it has is multiplication and addition. That's all it is. And it's very short. And what is it? It's an iterated equation. Well, what does that mean? It repeats itself. And what, how do you repeat an equation? The answer is this. You put in a number, start the equation, you get a result. You take that result, feed it back into the same equation, do it again, and you get another result. Take that result and feed it back in over and over and over and over again. I'll give you the simple one. Take a line and cut it in half. That's called the equation. So I start with a line this big, and I cut it in half. Boom. And now what do I do is I take one of those lines, half, put it back in the equation. What does the equation say? Take a line, cut it in half. So I take that one, cut it in half. Now it's this big. And I put that half back in the equation. I cut it in half. How many times can I do that? Infinite. And this is the character of fractal geometry. It's an infinite geometry. And how does it work? Well, I'll give you an example of an iterated equation. You start, this is called a Koch snowflake. It's an equilateral triangle. And the equation says, on every free surface, create an equilateral triangle whose dimensions are the length of that surface. So the next round is the orange triangle. This equilateral triangle has the length of this side. And same on this side and this side. But now look, oh, I have new sides. I have this side and I have this side and this side and that side. So I make a new triangle and that's the yellow one. But then on the surface of the yellow one, you see what I'm going through? How many times can I do that? Infinite. Infinite. Look inside your human body. You've got 50 trillion citizens. Each cell is an independent living entity sharing one environment. And when you're in health, can you imagine how many individuals that are in that little tiny space? They're, compared to the number of people on this planet, that makes them look insignificant. And yet they live in harmony. And they're able to share, work together. They have energy exchanges. They exchange an economy of ATP molecules. They support each other. They take care of each other. Uh, you want to know how to take care of ourselves and live in the world? Study how cells live in a human cell body. Because all the rules for living there are what we need to live here. And so that the mission of life is not to go through the concept that we live in a random world and God knows what's going to happen tomorrow. I can tell you what's going to happen. Why? The images repeat themselves over time. So when you look at higher or lower, it doesn't make any difference. I'll give you an example. We talk about particles and waves. Particles and waves. That the waves on the left are nonlinear. The particles are called linear. They're structure. And while everyone talks about, let me talk about the waves. No, 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 I want to talk about the particles. Everybody's missing the picture. You know where the action is? At the interface where the wave hits the particle. That's a chaos zone. That's where the waves and the particles interact and there's an etching at the surface of the energy of the waves and the physical energy of the particle. And this is a chaos place. And it's the same whether the particles are big or small. The earth is a particle. The waves of the solar system are the, the nonlinear waves. And the chaos is where? At the surface of the earth. And the interesting part about that is what happens at the surface of the earth? Well, think about this. Before there was life, what kind of chemistry did we have? Inorganic chemistry, non-life. The kind of chemistry that seeks stability. A rock likes to be a rock. It doesn't want to change. It'll stay a rock for as long as it possibly can. But when pigments evolved, pigments were able to trap photons of light from the sun, the waves, and take that energy of the photon and use it to move electrons, and in the process, take inorganic chemistry and create organic chemistry. Yeah, but we're made out of organic chemistry. So what does it say we're actually made out of? And the answer is this. We're made out of the earth and the sun. We are both at the same time. 
We are energized earth. An energized earth does not want to sit still. Energized earth is an active, moving, organic matrix. And so we are life, but we represent energy, half, matter, half, coming together. And so when we look at life, if we look at the earth before there was any life here, photons would hit the earth, be absorbed, and then the energy would radiate off as heat. But once uh, that inorganic chemistry was uh, endowed with the ability to uh, express uh, uh, organic chemistry, it changed. But in, the, in this case, let's just watch what happens here. Organic chemistry is the one that seeks activity, okay? Now watch. The photons, oh, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. It was an animation that didn't seem to play right now. What was the point? Photons of light came down, hit the earth, and after the evolution of organic chemistry, the photons didn't necessarily radiate back away again. The photons were now trapped in a matrix of organic chemistry. So the sunlight is accumulating on the surface of the earth. The earth is energized at the surface. And the waves come from the, from the uh, sun in the solar system. The particles come from the earth. And the chaos zone in the middle is where life occurs. So when we look at it, we can then relate and say, as is above, as is below. Then if we understand it this way, we physically came from the planet, but we energetically came from the sun. And in looking at that, then you could call the planet Mother Earth because this is the physical origin of where we came from and Father Son is, are the waves. And then even in our own reproduction, the egg is the earth that we come from and the sperm doesn't deliver any earth, it just delivers information. So the reality is it's still the same fractal imagery, I don't care what level you want to look at.